This is a show all about water in the desert and how the Las Vegas Valley Water District safely and reliably delivers that water to your home or business. My name is John Castanino, and in this episode, we're going to be diving into two topics gaining international attention. The Las Vegas Valley is the first community in the nation to place a ban on non-functional grass. We'll explain every detail of this new law and how it could affect you, but most importantly, how it will help sustain water supplies in our desert community. Which leads us into our second topic. We are headed straight for a federal water shortage declaration at Lake Mead. It's not time to panic, but it is time to conserve, and we need everyone to play a role in pushing back the effects of a seemingly endless drought. The location for this episode is Las Vegas Valley Water District Headquarters, where we'll offer you a tour of our campus throughout the episode. First, let's talk about grass. You may like the look, but it's thirsty, and we're in the middle of what many are calling a mega drought. Our community can no longer afford to use Colorado River water on grass that provides no recreational value. Here's more on the first of its kind ban of non-functional grass. With Lake Mead levels falling, Southern Nevada is taking a major step to prioritize conservation. We're the first community in the nation to pass a law that requires the replacement of non-functional turf grass by the end of 2026. The West has lost trillions of gallons of water because of exceptional drought conditions along the Colorado River that have lasted for more than 20 years. With no end in sight, we need to act. First, let's be clear. If you live in a single family home, this law doesn't affect you. You can keep your grass if you choose to. But you might be asking, what's the difference between functional grass and the non-functional grass that this law affects? Let's take a drive around town and I'll show you what we mean. First, let me tell you just how thirsty grass is. Just one square foot requires about 73 gallons of water per year. That's equivalent to 10 feet of rainfall. The non-functional grass we're talking about with this new law uses more than 10 billion gallons of water each year. That's more than the amount used by Southern Nevada's entire resort sector. And it accounts for about 10% of our entire Colorado River allocation. Think of all that water being applied to useless grass like this. These medians may look pretty, but they're not being used for anything other than aesthetics. It's not for recreation. Kids can't play here. This is non-functional, useless grass. Hey John, how about some Frisbee? There's more than 1.3 million square feet of non-functional grass in our medians. This grass will be replaced with desert landscaping under Southern Nevada's new law. Roadsides are even worse. 11.5 million square feet of this useless grass just sits on the side of the road, consuming nearly 1 billion gallons of water every year. Converting these areas to desert landscaping can still provide beautiful scenery, and it'll use far less water than grass. Now parks, of course, have plenty of grass, but this is functional grass, and we're going to keep it. We want to ensure that we have plenty of grassy places for families to enjoy, for recreational activities like soccer and football and frisbee, and a place to enjoy time with our pets. Golf courses are also considered functional as a space for recreation, along with schools. But there are areas around schools, parks, and golf courses that may contain useless grass. Those areas will be identified and will need to be replaced as well. We'll see the most water savings from this new law at businesses and homeowners associations. Grass in these areas is purely decorative and adds up to more turf in Southern Nevada than you'll find in all our single family homes combined. Right now, only 20% of businesses have replaced their non-functional grass. HOAs and apartments have only replaced about 30%. The Southern Nevada Water Authority will continue to offer a $3 per square foot rebate to convert grass to water smart landscaping. 
The first step of the new law will be to create an advisory panel with stakeholders across the community to lay the groundwork on how to best implement the change. Ah! <laughs> Here's the big takeaway. Converting these areas will save us over 10 billion gallons of water every year, and that's about 10% of our Colorado River supply. The new law doesn't apply to homes, but if you're considering voluntarily removing grass in your yard, check out our financial incentives at snwa.com. Let's all conserve together. Lake Mead is the largest reservoir in the country, storing water supplies from the Colorado River, not only for Southern Nevada, but also for California, Arizona, and Mexico. Today, the lake is less than 40% full. Exceptional drought conditions on the river supplying 40 million people have lasted more than two decades. As a result, Lake Mead's levels are falling. Its elevation is now below 1,075 feet, 140 feet below peak levels in the year 2000. An elevation 1075 is an important number. It's highly likely to stay below that figure at the start of 2022, and if projections coming this summer show it will, the Bureau of Reclamation will declare the first ever federal water shortage along the Colorado. We can expect to be in a shortage condition on the Colorado River uh, even sooner than what was projected. And the good news is this is exactly what we've been preparing for. Uh, Southern Nevada has been preparing to be in a shortage condition for over a decade and a half. And really, I think we are the single best prepared municipal area uh, within the, the Colorado River Basin states. The federal shortage means beginning next year, Southern Nevada might see its annual water allocation of 300,000 acre feet from Lake Mead, which is 90% of our entire water supply, cut by 13,000 acre feet per year. The Southern Nevada Water Authority has completed work on large infrastructure projects to ensure safe water delivery, even with a federal shortage declaration. We have secured our means of delivery. We've talked to you before about uh, building the third intake, about building the low lake level pumping station so that uh, under any hydrologic scenario, we have physical access to our water supply and we continue to explore uh, groundbreaking uh, partnerships on the Colorado River. If supplies from the Colorado continue to worsen, even larger cuts could be coming. Southern Nevada has a short-term savings account at its disposal if necessary. We have uh, banked water all over uh, the river. We have recharged our own aquifer here in the Las Vegas Valley, stored water in Lake Mead, banked water in the state of Arizona, and water in uh, the state of California. And if you add up all those bank accounts, we have about eight years of our current demands uh, in reserve. With 60% of Southern Nevada's water use being outdoors, the situation on the Colorado demands conservation. Make sure you do your part. Change your irrigation clocks each season, never water on Sunday, and consider replacing water-thirsty grass with desert-friendly landscaping. Welcome back to the Las Vegas Valley Water District, and you're joining us inside what we call our SCADA room. SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition System. It's a mouthful to remember, but all you need to know is that it's an important room that oversees pumps and reservoir stations all throughout the valley, leading to the water we deliver to your home. This department is on duty 24-7 and in normal times would operate inside this room. But when the COVID pandemic struck and quarantines were put into place, our organization responded like many others, transitioning to a secure remote working status as quickly as possible. SCADA operations did so within days and with the help of our IT department, it was seamless. It had to be seamless to prevent any service interruptions. Here's how the Las Vegas Valley Water District ensured safe water delivery and also provided a special delivery of a much needed item to our local medical community during COVID-19. <laughs> Twenty twenty will forever be remembered as the year of the coronavirus. But for many, it will also be a year where we saw organizations and industries step up through a global pandemic. That includes operating and maintaining the safety of Southern Nevada's water system. 
the Las Vegas Valley Water District and the Southern Nevada Water Authority at their core have a um, very missional mindset, and that is to ensure that we're providing a service to this community. So when we mobilized the workforce into this situation, we took on the mantra, we've got this. And all 1,300 of our employees genuinely embraced that. Whether you were on site, whether you were working from home, the core function and aspect and belief that we have a community that we need to serve and protect uh, came through in all ways. As the COVID crisis unfolded, the organization enacted its Pandemic Readiness Response Plan, a plan that was first crafted during the avian flu outbreak in the mid-2000s, but not needed until the coronavirus reached the United States. And it just so happens that it was very, very applicable to what we moved into with respect to COVID. And so putting it into actual practice is a pretty big uh, endeavor. And our first focus was really associated with public safety and employee safety. Researchers at the Southern Nevada Water Authority were amongst the first in the world to detect markers of the virus in untreated wastewater and then confirmed those markers were eliminated in the early stages of the treatment process. And so it was a critical variable for us to make sure that we could communicate to the community that the water that we were giving and providing to them was COVID free. And that was very reassuring and really it, it spoke to the advanced capabilities and preparation of our research and development function to be able to assist us in this practical application. The district's pandemic response plan also included a large reserve of one specific item, N95 masks. We've been stockpiling the N95 masks for many years, and these were in high demand in the medical community. We were able to provide them with over 50,000 while keeping enough back to equip our employees to fulfill their mission. It was really fulfilling for our staff to be able to do so, knowing that that was a critical item needed in the community at the time. We're also more prepared as an organization to be able to quickly transfer into a different operating state based on this experience. And so I feel very, very confident that if we experience uh, a COVID-20 or some other circumstance that may occur in the future, our people are capable and they're prepared and they can move very quickly into a different operational state. Recently, Southern Nevada has been grabbing attention online and around the globe when it comes to water in our desert community. A federally declared water shortage is coming as Lake Mead levels continue to decline after more than 20 years of drought along the Colorado River. To help ensure a sustainable water future, Las Vegas has become the first community in the nation to not encourage, but require non-functional grass be replaced by the year 2027. John Ensminger, General Manager of the Las Vegas Valley Water District and Southern Nevada Water Authority, met with us to discuss the shortage and new turf law, beginning with why legislation was necessary to battle back against what many are calling a mega drought. Well, we've been incentivizing the community to take out this type of non-functional turf uh, for the last 20 years. But with uh, the impending shortage declaration, uh, with the hydrology we're seeing as a result of climate change uh, in the Rocky Mountains, uh, it was time to take that next step and say, we're simply not going to allow this type of non-functional turf to exist in our community uh, after the next five years passes. To be clear, the new law doesn't apply to homeowners. Yeah, single family homes uh, will still be eligible for our Water Smart Landscape uh, rebate program, but we're really looking at uh, multifamily homes, uh, commercial developments, uh, traffic circles, medians, the type of grass that simply doesn't get utilized, the type of grass that only gets walked on uh, when someone is mowing it. Ensminger lays out what the first steps of the new law will be. 
Well, AB 356, the legislation uh, that is banning the non-functional turf, requires the formation of a citizens committee of nine members that will uh, take a look at the definition of non-functional turf. It's easy for us to sort of in shorthand say, uh, we know it when we see it, we know it's uh, only walked on when somebody mows it, but we really need a specific legal definition so that we can then get out into the community uh, and you know make that happen. As the law is clearly defined over the coming months, it's encouraged that the community act now. Take advantage of the Water Authority's WaterSmart Landscapes rebate to help pay for a conversion as it's still available for now. Certainly uh, in the initial phase, as we roll this out, the, the rebate will still be available. But as always, you know, we'll have to assess uh, community response, uh, our funding in our budget, uh, because it will at some point be mandatory, so we'll have to see how long that rebate lasts. Now, the federal water shortage and why it's coming, cutting Southern Nevada's share of water by 7 billion gallons beginning in 2022. So just the nuts and bolts of it, uh, every month the Bureau of Reclamation does a 24-month study that looks out two years to see what the uh, reservoir elevations are going to look like. And if that 24-month study that's released in August shows the Lake Mead elevation on January 1, 2022 being below elevation 1075, that triggers the Secretary of Interior declaring a shortage. Well, as we film this today, the lake's elevation is at 1068. So the odds are nearly 100% that that August 24 month study will trigger that first ever declared shortage condition. Naturally, our community could get anxious hearing the words water shortage, but Ensminger says this is a situation the organization has been preparing to face for years through new infrastructure and continued conservation efforts. Well, I think at least for the people of Southern Nevada, they should be reassured because this isn't sneaking up on us. We've been getting ready for this for the last 20 years. And when you hear shortage, uh, that can be concerning, but that's a legal term that really means we have a legal right to divert less than our full legal entitlement from uh, the lake. However, because of our past conservation efforts, we're actually using substantially less than our legal entitlement. So at least for Nevada, maybe not for all of the other uh, basin states, but for Nevada, a shortage basically means for the next few years, we have less extra water. To date, conservation programs have saved Southern Nevada a combined 175 billion gallons of water. But Ensminger tells us the organization will continue the message of asking everyone to be water smart to secure our water future. Yeah, absolutely. And we've uh, been doing great on conservation for the last 20 years. But as we keep telling people, uh, conservation is a journey. It's not a destination. Uh, so we're going to keep uh, on that journey for the next several years and, and see where the community gets to. In September, watering restrictions require all Valley water users to reduce landscape watering from six to three days a week. We know that it still feels hot in the early fall, but the mornings and nights are much cooler and your landscape can thrive with less water. Fall watering restrictions allow you to water up to three days a week, but just because you can water three days a week in the fall doesn't mean that your landscape needs that much water. In fact, your plants will show you that just one to two days of watering is enough. If you think any plants are starting to look a little stressed, don't forget that hand watering is allowed anytime. So if you notice brown spots in your grass or plants needing just a little more attention, spot water them with a handheld hose. Pay attention to your landscape and let your grass and plants dictate whether you should add or take away a day here and there. But whatever you do, follow mandatory watering restrictions. Watering on more days than allowed or outside of your assigned schedule can lead to a water waste fine. One more thing to remember, while it's still August, Summer watering restrictions prohibit watering between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m., the hottest part of the day. Finally, watering on Sundays is never allowed. That means every Sunday throughout the year. For more watering tips, visit us at snwa.com.
Hi, I'm Nathan Harper. I'm the preserve archaeologist here at the Springs Preserve. Our gardens here at the Springs Preserve are ornamental in nature. We have pretty flowers, we have ornamental plants and other things. But what would you have to do if you had to survive on the plants you grew in your own garden? We're going to talk about that today here on Vegas Valley Water History. The Mojave Desert is a pretty harsh environment. It's a difficult place to live. You have to know where the plants are, you have to know where the water is, you have to know where their animals are going. And so it's very important, if you're an indigenous person who is living in this area, to have that knowledge, to understand the natural world around you. And so gardening in the past wasn't just about making things pretty or having nice flowers, it was about surviving, it was about bringing the natural world closer to you and being able to control it. So when we talk about gardening in the past, this is mostly about people trying to survive. Now, people who lived here before us, Southern Paiute people, the Nuwuvi people, and others who came before us, were masters of learning how to understand this environment and live in this environment. Their gardens were mostly around springs, naturally fed by waters or creeks. Sometimes they would have had irrigation ditches. Throughout the wider Southwest, even, you would have had rock field plantings. This is where piles of rocks would have been put in fields with bean plants planted underneath those. And the uh, rocks would have served as sort of an area where condensation could happen and would help water those plants naturally. Here in Southern Nevada, in this harsh environment that we live in today, before there was air conditioning, before there was automobiles, before there was even horses, indigenous people lived here on this land and survived by bringing the natural world to them in their gardens. Southern Paiute people, beyond being horticulturalists and garden people, were also hunters and gatherers. They went out in the natural world and gathered things like pine nuts and mesquite and willow and other things. Oftentimes, they would take those plants from those natural stands and they would bring them back to their homes, back to their gardens to grow uh, in their place so they didn't have to walk two miles, three miles, four miles to a stand of plants or a representative place where they could get those plants. From the archaeological record here at the Springs Preserve, we knew that Southern Paiute and Ancestral Puebloan peoples that lived here on our site grew corn, beans, squash, wheat, and also would have harvested things like Indian rice grass, mesquite pods, or pine nuts. That wide variety of foods led to a very rich diet. For today's gardeners, you can take some of those lessons we've learned from the Southern Paiute people about efficient planting, efficient watering, and the types of plants that are suited to this environment. We can learn those lessons from the Southern Paiute people and apply them to today's gardens. There are many lessons we can learn from Southern Paiute gardens, whether it's the plants they grew in this harsh environment or their efficient irrigation methods. You can learn all about these conservation methods and other things here at the Springs Preserve if you come out to our gardens and speak to one of our gardeners. We look forward to seeing you again on Vegas Valley Water History. The past 12 months have been a year like no other, but rest assured the Las Vegas Valley Water District's number one priority was and continues to be the delivery of safe, high quality drinking water. Take a look at the 2021 water quality report you should have received in the mail to learn just how safe the water delivered to your tap is, water that's regulated by the EPA. FYI, bottled water isn't regulated and bottled water is tested less frequently. Thanks for watching Vegas Valley H2O and thanks for being water smart.